Carol Goodman and I am an artist, musician, farmer and yogi and we're here in Wakefield, Quebec at my farm called the 100 Mile Farm. I'm a visual artist uh, since I was a very small child. My mom was always putting paintbrushes in front of me and watercolor and I grew up in a very artsy family. My mother was a singer and a teacher so she was very on top of me as a musician and an artist. For my visual art, I, I do everything, but uh, more recently I've gotten really into collage work, so it's multimedia. I'm inspired a lot by the work I do with special needs um, clients and friends that I work with. So I grew up also, because of my mom, working with special needs people. Over the years, um, even as a teenager, I would uh, work as a PSW with autistic uh, kids and adults, and I loved it. And over time, it evolved into me as an art teacher. I don't love using that word teacher because I feel like it's a collaboration in many ways. So they inspire me, I inspire them. And um, so what I find works best with people who have special needs, uh, the elderly, people with Down syndrome, autism, even just um, anxiety. I've worked with people who are in depressions and things like that as well, is the collage work because I think a lot of times we need to just get over this idea that we're not an artist. I believe that we are all artists and when we aren't creating, it actually can have very challenging repercussions such as like anger. I think a lot of the anger that we have in our culture nowadays is because we're not creating enough. So on the uh, music side of my artistry, I heavily influenced by Joni Mitchell as I mentioned before, I grew up singing Swedish in a Swedish um, choir. We sang at the Swedish Embassy every year. It was the Santa Lucia Choir, which is a, it's a sort of a festival or a holiday that Swedish and Italian people celebrate right before Christmas on some, or winter solstice. And so I grew up singing, learning to play the piano, and. Back then we had um, bins of cassettes and CDs and so I walked into HMV and I picked out this Joni Mitchell Blue Album cassette and I came home and I put it in my tape recorder and I was just completely filled with elation, uh, I don't know, just this intense full body joy. I began playing her music at open stages and people would come up to me and ask me, did you write that? And I was just completely horrified that <laughs> there was this whole generation of people who didn't know who Joni Mitchell was. And so over time, I just uh, decided that I needed to sort of educate uh, Canadians, but the general public on who Joni Mitchell is and how incredibly influential she is. And then, so I learned the guitar. I played at the Black Sheep a few times. It was going pretty well. I didn't realize I had talent until uh, Paul Symes came up to me and took me by the shoulders and he was like, he's the owner of the Black Sheep. Um, and he was like, do you see that people loved your music? So, and then I, I remarried and a wonderful husband that I've had for 20 years, but he had three small kids. And uh, three weeks after I moved in, the youngest uh, was in the car accident and broke his neck. And so the next um, 10 years was a lot of childcare and, and just like looking after his special needs. And then one of my kids had a lot of special needs as well. So they were both often not able to go to school. So uh, long story short, um, 
after 10 years of just intense, intense caretaking, working nights, uh, while my husband worked days um, in the service industry, um, I just sort of had this sort of crisis of, of self. And I realized um, I was turning 40 and I needed to get on with this project and this dream that I had of creating a um, show of Joni Mitchell's music. So I started like intensely researching her life, learning about why people didn't know who she was, and a big reason was because she just, she had some health issues, but also she just was so repulsed by the industry. So anyway, I created this show. I performed it at the Black Sheep and uh, it was wonderful. It had a wonderful reception. And then I've been touring my music and her music sort of in New Orleans and all over the place. And then COVID hit, um, but it, she is turning 80 uh, this year. And so it is, my dream to really do like a international tour and um, just really get this show out there um, so people know who she is. And then I have my own music that I'm recording an album um, that should be finished this fall. So some of us have a calling and uh, for me it was uh, music and my art. My greatest joy is to share that experience of art making and particularly um, visual art that's so beautiful that you can hang it on your walls because I taught paint night for many years and um, I taught over 200 classes and, and I loved it. It was so fun and just having, uh, setting up a situation where people could experience that visceral feeling of putting paint on a canvas was wonderful. But what I found was lacking in those classes where you wouldn't necessarily want to like hang the art for long periods of time. And so my passion is offering art classes where people can create pieces um, that are so beautiful that they can hang on their walls with gold leaf and collage work that they can cherish for a lifetime. I, I offer classes in my studio. I, I do one-on-one -on -one work with um, clients like I mentioned already. However, um, as I go forward, um, I'm gonna be focusing more on group classes and um, once our barn is fully renovated, I'm going to be teaching larger classes in my barn, hopefully by next summer. Um, sort of paint night style, but um, as I mentioned, I'd like to have gold leaf and other um, collage work and things like that in, included in and watercolor and working with nature and flowers and, and drawings. In 2019, the back half collapsed. So, uh, the, the next phase of our, our vision is um, renovating the barn and turning it back into a venue and then uh, inviting people to have weddings. And I'd like to have house concerts and um, other events here that we could offer to the public along with a ferry walk. Like the first phase will just be to like fix that, for example, and then um, sturdy it up and do the foundation and then we want to insulate it. So there's just like, it's not all going to happen overnight. But we can certainly get it to a place where next summer people could have weddings again in it. And I could do my house concerts and art classes. I've been to, myself, I've been to art retreats, like songwriting retreats and things. And so it's my dream to offer that here at our farm. It's just such a nourishing, beautiful space. Um, there's a lot of fairies here. Um, I have fairies in my artwork, but uh, I grew up as a young child. My mother and my grandmother, my Swedish grandmother, taught me to offer gifts to the fairies. And so I spent a lot of time like dancing for them, singing to them, leaving sweet tea in the windowsill. And I formed this friendship with them. And for me, that never ended. <laughs> and so I've just always kept this friendship with them. They're the ones that brought me here. Um, they're the ones who, uh, like I'll joke with my husband and say like, just be careful what you say about the fairies and leprechauns because, you know, they're listening. Because <laughs> sometimes he just thinks I'm a little bit um, airy fairy, but I am. <laughs> One of the things I love most about bringing people here to the farm when they come to our vacation rental on Airbnb or if they come for classes or I also do live music events, so I've had house concerts and I've had really big concerts like 
up to 800 people here with um, 10 different bands that went into like five in the morning kind of thing, which was incredible, um, to just smaller house concerts uh, at Christmas time and uh, in the summer. And I just love um, when people come and they're able to connect with the land, connect with the fairies,